please get ready for dictation of exercise number 16 from progressive magazine of october 2022 5 seconds to go start in the light of the legal position stated here in above it is very clear that no tax on the sale or purchase of goods can be imposed by any state when the transaction of sale or purchase takes place in the course of import of goods into or export of the goods out of the territory of india thus if any transaction of sale or purchase takes place when the goods are being imported in india or they are or they are being exported from india no state can impose any tax thereon section 5 of the central act deals with the transaction which is said to have taken place in the course of import or export relevant portion of section 5 of the central act reads as a sale or purchase of goods shall be deemed to take place in the course of the import of the goods into the territory of india only if the sale or purchase either occasions such import or is effected by a transfer of documents of title to the goods before goods have crossed the customs frontiers of india upon perusal of the afore stated provision of section 5 of the central act it is clear that a sale or purchase of goods shall be deemed to take place in the course of import of the goods into the territory of india only if sale or purchase takes place before the goods have crossed the customs frontiers of india looking to the afore stated legal position it cannot be disputed that the goods sold at the duty free shops owned by the appellant would be said to have been sold before the goods crossed the customs frontiers of india as it is not in dispute that the duty free shops of the appellant situated at the international airport of bengaluru are beyond the customs frontiers of india that is they are not within the customs frontiers of india if this is the factual and legal position in our opinion looking to the provisions of article 286 of the constitution the state of karnataka has no right to tax any such transaction which takes place at the duty free shops owned by the appellant which are not within the customs frontiers of india looking to the aforesaid simple and factual legal position in our opinion it would not be much useful to discuss the judgments which have been referred to in our opinion the legal position is so clear that it was not necessary for the learned counsel to refer to any judgment and merely by showing the aforesaid factual aspect and legal provisions to the concerned authority the appellant could have convinced the concerned authority that the sale effected at the duty free shops of the appellant could not have been taxed by the state of karnataka learned counsel appearing for the respondent authorities had vehemently submitted that the appellant had not exhausted equally efficacious alternative statutory remedy and therefore the single judge of the high court had rightly not entertained the petition
filed by the appellant. According to them, the division bench had also rightly dismissed the appeal for the same reason. According to them, this court also should not entertain this appeal. It is true that the appellant had rushed to the High Court without exhausting equally efficacious alternative statutory remedy. In our opinion, the learned single judge of the High Court was also right when he directed the appellant to move the statutory appellate authority. In normal circumstances, even we would have expressed the same opinion but looking to the fact that the special leave petition has already been admitted and the matter pertains to the assessment year 2004-2005, it would not be in the interest of the justice to relegate the appellant to the statutory authorities, especially when the legal position is very clear and the law is also in favour of the appellant. The learned counsel appearing for the respondent had submitted that the sale would not be taxed under the Act only if it occasions in the course of import, but the transactions of sale which are subject matter of this litigation had not taken place in the course of import and therefore they would not be exempted under the provisions of Section 5 of the Central Act. In our opinion, the aforestated submission cannot be sustained. They again submitted that in the course of import means the transaction ought to have taken place beyond the territories of India and not within the geographical territory of India. We do not agree with the said submission. When any transaction takes place outside the customs frontiers of India, the transaction would be said to have taken place outside India. Though the transaction might take place within India, but technically looking to the provisions of Section 211 of the Customs Act and Article 286 of the Constitution, the said transaction would be said to have taken place outside India, the goods that are imported into the territory of India. Stop.